Hello. Today I have for you a Wheeler Skeleton Farm. So this is one I have been designing in the past few weeks. And yeah, let's get right into it. So this is my attempt at making a lag-friendly Wither Skeleton Farm. And the reason is that I've seen a lot of very, very fast Wither Skeleton Farms before. But all of them, like, they get very close to 50 MSPT, and if you haven't seen that video about TPS and stuff, you should go check it out. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to try to make a pretty lag-friendly one that you could use on your server without disturbing your friends. And yeah, this is what I came up with. So before I show you the actual, like, everything under there, I just want to mention that it is pretty complicated and very high effort. So I would not recommend it to anybody unless you're going for relatively high efficiency and lag friendliness. But yeah. So yeah, this is a bit of a monstrosity. Now you can see why I'm not recommending this to pretty much anyone unless you want a relatively lag friendly farm. So as you can see, super high effort, we have a sliced portal, and this is to get rid of um, the other stuff like zombie pigmen and blaze. And we have a 20 meter per second mob conveyor. And yeah, so this is insanely complex for like most people. So again, I would not really recommend it, but if you do want to build this, there is a wall download in the description. But anyway, let's get into the rates. So how would you measure rates of such a farm? Well, first of all, I'm going to switch it on. And as you can see, there's all that flying machine stuff going on there. And then, once it's kind of up and running, uh, let me get away from here because it's kind of loud. So I'm still over there, by the way. But I'm going to do slash spawn tracking start and click enter and then what that's gonna do is because uh, I have carpet mod running so this is not a vanilla command but I can do this because I have a carpet mod so what this does is it tracks the spawning of all the mobs inside the mob farm so when a new mob spawns it's gonna count it and it's gonna record it for me so next what I'm gonna do is slash tick warp and I'm going to run this farm for about an hour, so 72,000, because this is measured in ticks, so 72,000 ticks is an hour. And then after that, I'm going to do slash spawn tracking stop, which means that it's going to stop the spawn tracking after an hour. So let's hit enter, and as you can see, the farm is now going really fast, that's because uh, we have the tick warp running again if you haven't seen that video about TPS and stuff I would highly suggest you do that but anyway I'm just gonna wait for a few minutes it shouldn't really take that long and then I'll show you the results alright so my computer actually decided to kind of um, go to sleep so I had to wake it up and cut the tick warp a bit short but this should be pretty accurate anyway so we have 8,208 with skeleton spawns per hour. So what you do is, so I script run, and this is pretty much just like use as a calculator. If you have a separate calculator, you can use that. Slash script run 8 to oh, 8 or whatever amount that you get over here. And this is the spawns per hour. And we're looking specifically at with skeletons because that's what we want. So times 0 0.055, because that's the chance of getting a Wither Skeleton Skull using Looting 3. And then over 60, because we want per minute. And we get about 7.5 Wither Skeleton Skulls per minute. So it's not insanely fast, but the benefit is that it's only about 17 MSBT. So, like, for example, TT's farm that produces, like, um, like 14 skulls per minute or something. That one, whenever I try to run it, it frequently goes between, like, 45 to 60 MSPT on my computer. Now, my computer isn't the best, but still, that says something. It's pretty laggy, 
and the fact that this only produces about 17 MSBT, it's pretty good. So now you probably want to know how it works. I mean, you probably don't, but anyway. Mobs spawn over here, and let me actually show you. So this is using a double intersection. And let me turn on the structure bounder bo bounding boxes. And all this stuff in here, this is in the bounding box of another fortress, like the small bounding box. So we can actually use whatever blocks we want here. But here we have to use nether brick because it's in the big bounding box, but not in the small one. So anyway, we pretty much have the same thing on all of the sides, except up here it's a bit shorter because it takes a while longer for the stuff to fall down there. So I thought to make up for um, the kill time to make this a bit shorter. Anyway, the stuff spawns up here. The slime block flying machines drop them all the way here. And the reason I'm using ice here is because they can actually shoot a mob all the way over here so the slime block flying machine doesn't have to get all the way here and that helps to reduce the lifetime by a little bit. So anyway, here we have a 20 meter per second conveyor that runs on a clock and so this isn't optimally lag friendly because obviously we have blinking redstone dust but I mean it took me so long to get to this point and I just decided to kind of leave it at that. It's still fine 17 MSPT is really good for a farm of this um, efficiency. But anyway, stuff falls down here, so the wither skeletons and the skeletons and blazes and stuff, they all fall down here. And then there should be a hole, like right over here. And you might be wondering about these trapdoors. But the thing is that when you're using this and there is no roof, then I've experienced this that and there's, when there's a lot of mobs here, then they actually kind of jump up. And what that does is it makes them miss this hole that we want them to fall into. And yeah, so the reason I put these trap doors here is if we put these trap doors, then the mobs, they kind of fly up a bit, but these trap doors sp stop them. But then I had the problem that we needed mobs to kind of fall down here, and these trap doors were blocking their way. So I just put some pistons there that only activated when the conveyor was activated. So so yeah. And then we have the drop in here. And here we have a too high mob filter. How you do that is you just have this 10 meter per second conveyor here. And here we have some blocks at three or there's two blocks of space in between here. So two high mobs can actually fit in here. But wither skeletons, because they're about two and a half blocks high, they actually can't fit in here. So this mob conveyor actually can push them all the way over here. And all the two high mobs that we don't want, so the pigmen and the skeletons and stuff, they all fall in here. And over there I just put some uh, mine cards for entity cramming and some lava, I think, to just remove the items. But then anyway, they all fly up here. Um, well, they get pushed into here, the wither skeletons, and then we have a 30 meter per second conveyor uh, elevator that takes them all the way up here. It's kind of like if you've ever known the Wooly Creeper slime block elevator, but this is just a lot faster. And then they drop in here and they are killed. So I just put a command block here that kills them automatically because, I don't know, I just, I guess I could spawn a bot in here, but I didn't really want to deal with that. So anyway, here, this is a system that pushes the wither skeletons off over here once they get up here. So if you've seen uh, how the farm was working before, then you saw that the wither skeletons, they go up here, and then this piece of glass, it pushes them into here. And then, yeah, the wither skeletons just drop in here. And then once you kill them and the drops get dropped, then we have a piston that has a carpet here that pushes the drops over here. The reason I didn't have just a piston here is because sometimes the items will glitch inside the piston. So anyway, yeah. And then they drop here, the slime block shoots them over here over this packed ice. And this slime block shoots them over here over these item sorters. I had it go for a little while here so that they can slow down and be reliably collected into these item sorters. But anyway, 
we have the item sorters and then we just drop in here we need two sorters for the bones two sorters for the coal and one for the wither skeletons but since that's the most precious part uh, I decided that I just put two sorters for the wither skeleton skulls anyway because just in case it misses the first one the rest of this stuff this is pretty common so you don't really need that that much and we don't have a filter for sword, that they just drop into the lava. So yeah, this is pretty much just the chamber. Of course, you can design it however you want, but this is how I personally like it. Um, we just have a, kind of a ladder going here, and then here we have all of the chests and stuff. So what's all this out here? Well, this is actually another brick with some slabs on top of it to uh, stop it from spawning. And what this actually does is the game, it thinks that since there's another brick here, so since there's another brick here, it thinks that it can actually spawn a mob here. So it starts the spawning algorithm at that block, but then it realizes it can't spawn the mob there. But what it still does is the mob algorithm continues, and it actually pack spawns. So what that does is it goes out here, like anywhere around that original block, and it tries to spawn a mob here. And it does that, I think, like um, either four times and it goes up to five blocks, or five times it goes up to four blocks out. But anyway, just um, you probably only need about five blocks of nether brick around here, but I just went for all the way to 20 because that's the maximum. So anyway, what happens is that the spawning algorithm it actually can jump into here, and here it can spawn a mob because the spawning place isn't blocked, but out here it can't, so this actually helps to increase the spawn rates in here, and Embon explained that in his Wither Skeleton Farm video. By the way, that's a way more, um, like, simpler design, and that is, like, probably the most recommended design ever, because this I would absolutely not recommend unless you're going just purely for the lag efficiency and for the relatively high amount of Wither Skeleton skulls per minute. Because his design, I think, produces about four or four and a half per minute, and it's produced seven and a half, so not that big of a difference. And of course, you also have to remove the nether roof. And yeah, that's pretty much why I don't really recommend this, but this is just a pretty interesting proof of concept. But this is just in case you have like a really bad server or something, and you really want a pretty good with a skeleton farm, and you don't care how long it takes to build it, you just want it to be pretty efficient and lag friendly so that you're not like one frame per second here and yeah so that's pretty much it for this farm um, I don't think there's really anything else there's obviously this thing over here uh, these are instant repeaters just because I really like my stuff to like activate immediately when I turn the switch but these don't have to be instant repeaters they could be regular repeaters but here starting from this repeater here all of these instance repeaters have to be instance repeaters because we get, have to get the flying machines to um, start going on their own, otherwise they can stick here. And obviously you could put some blocks on the end, but then they wouldn't be bouncy. Anyway, more than 20 hours was spent on this farm. So, yeah. I'd very appreciate it if you gave me a like and subscribe you, and if you want to see more stuff like this, because I have a pretty cool thing I want to share with you that's probably going to be way more beginner friendly than this and that's going to be coming up in the next video so yeah stay tuned for that but anyway that's going to be it for today I really hope you enjoyed this video if you did like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one bye